Hi everyone, good morning and thanks for coming out to our event, the Windows Migration Webinar, uh, hosted with AWS. My name is Delton Phillips and um, I'm the Director of Strategy Innovation at Particular Presence Technologies. And we're an AWS uh, select partner uh, based here, born in Jamaica. And um, today uh, we're, we'll be engaging in uh, this webinar to discuss uh, strategies about moving workloads to AWS in the cloud, to the AWS cloud, Windows workloads. And we'll also be talking about uh, just some overall techniques about migration and the various services that are available on AWS. Before we go into the webinar, um, I'd like to just give a quick overview of our organization. Uh, Particular Presence Technologies is a, a software and technology company. Uh, we've been uh, registered in Jamaica for the last seven years. And um, as I said before, we are an AWS uh, partner. Uh, we, the things that we do, we build applications. Uh, so we build web applications, uh, applications for enterprises, we also uh, do integrations uh, for, uh, for enterprises. So integrating uh, banking insurance systems, uh, building customer portals, among many other activities that we engage in. And uh, another thing that we also do is that we actually maintain uh, existing software. So we partner with organizations to maintain their existing legacy software and we also uh, take them on a modernization journey. And one of the things that we'll definitely be going over on this call today is that uh, modernizing software, modernizing your infrastructure um, has evolved in our opinion to, to the cloud. Uh, there is a role for some on-premise activities, but we do believe that for many of the applications and systems that many organizations have um, um, modernizing and moving that to the cloud is definitely uh, one of the, the recommendations that we would make. So in this presentation today, we're actually going to spend some time going through techniques to do that. And um, our host or our presenter today is an uh, AWS architect um, with uh, Amazon Web Services. So he will be able to answer many other questions that, that we have. And the last point here is that we innovate. And you know that basically means a few things that we do is that with your legacy applications, your older applications, we're actually able to glean lots of data, infer various, um, um, infer various uh, things based on that data and uh, mm -hmm. create new experiences for customers. Uh, just a uh, high level, as I said before, we're AWS um, select partner. Uh, our teams, uh, all our employees, all our technical employees are, are certified AWS uh, professionals. Uh, we have certified developers. We have certified solutions architects. We also have uh, specialty training and certification in areas such as machine learning. So um, we are definitely, um, you know, you go to partner for, for going to AWS uh, here in Jamaica and throughout the Caribbean. Uh, our credentials uh, speak for us itself. You know, we've done quite a few implementations of AWS products and services uh, here in the Caribbean. And, um, you know, many, many, many people have probably experienced them, but we're not allowed to talk about them. But um, off note, uh, last year, we, we actually, um, helped a customer to move their, to break up their on-premise monolith, um, well, parts of it, and um, containerize their applications, uh, allow them to auto-scale and so that they could actually serve uh, hundreds of, uh, 100,000 plus users um, within a, a very short space of time. Um, one day we'll talk a little more about that. I said before, we do software integration. Uh, software development um, and consultation, we also do that. So we will come in and talk and to, to learn more about your, your needs and provide uh, paths to actually get into your objectives. 
uh, project management, I mentioned some of the other things, software development. Um, partnerships is one of our big, big things. Um, we partner with uh, enterprise organizations throughout Jamaica, the Caribbean, uh, where we are their trusted software development and technology partner. And for many of them, we're actually uh, going through a phase now, we're actually moving them um, from on-premise for some of, their, some of their workloads and moving that to the cloud in order to, uh, for various reasons, cost efficiency, um, reliability, performance, security, which some people wouldn't believe, but it's probably, it's a lot more secure in the cloud, which we uh, had a webinar on that last year, which we will also share um, at some point um, to you. And um, uh, yeah, so, you know, there, there there is a big benefit to partnering with um, uh, an organization as ourselves. Uh, as said on this slide, um, agility, team strength, and teamwork is um, major for us. Uh, so we, we actually do engage in mentoring and training uh, software development teams for organizations um, because we do know that the transition to uh, cloud or to newer technologies or to best practices sometimes is not as straightforward as people um, may think. So it requires a lot of investment to be able to do that. And um, reach out today uh, after this call and we're your trusted software development partner. And um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, to you uh, Tamrat uh, Yosef. Tamrat is an AWS solutions architect and um, he'll be uh, handing the presentation today. Uh, over to you, Tamrat. I think you're on mute. Perfect, Delton, can you hear me now? Perfect. Yes, all right. Uh, good morning, everybody. So my name is uh, Tamrat Yosef. As uh, Delton um, has said, I'm a solutions architect here at uh, Amazon Web Services or AWS. And it is my uh, pleasure to talk to you today about uh, Windows on AWS, how migrating and using Windows uh, workloads on AWS can be beneficial to your business. So. Um, really want to thank, uh, take the time to thank uh, Delton and the particular presence team for having us uh, today. This is the first uh, discussion we're going to have, and we hope that you, you keep in touch with particular presence and, and, and us as well, so we can go deeper into any of these topics that we're going to cover on the call today. So <clears throat> uh, as you can see here this uh, on, on the screen now, this is a small sampling of some of the questions we are hearing from our customers when it comes to uh, migrating and running Windows uh, with, within AWS. Uh, you may have your own questions as well that may not be listed here. The, the goal of the session here, here is, is, is intended to show you why AWS should be your choice for um, your AWS workloads by answering your questions and some of these questions and uh, showcasing the value AWS brings to our customers. So customers have been running Windows workloads on AWS for over a decade. Something that most people don't know, and we'll, we'll talk about this a bit more, is that uh, uh, we, we as AWS run nearly two times more Windows Server instances on AWS than the next largest uh, cloud provider. That's according to an IDC report. Uh, AWS supports everything you need to build and run Windows applications, including Active Directory, uh, .NET applications, System Center, uh, SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Servers, Visual Studio, uh, and, and uh, Windows Servers, and, and, and a few others. Um, AWS also has been the first and only fully managed native Windows uh, 5 system available in the cloud with the Amazon FSx for Windows 5 Server and is the only cloud provider to provide production support for uh, Kubernetes on, on Windows. As uh, Delta mentioned, this is one, uh, one of the most popular container management platforms that we have uh, available. So before we dive uh, deeper into some of the topics here, uh, maybe we'll take a quick pause and uh, Leanne will ask a, a quick poll to gather some information as to what your thoughts are on, on that question, Leanne.
All right, so the question is, what concerns you most about running your Windows workloads in the cloud? Um, and you can select uh, the ones that best describe your concerns. And I guess you can, uh, you can select more than one. And we'll give you a minute or so to complete this. All right, so we have the results here. So cost seems to be the front runner, followed by security performance. All right, I think it, just take a quick note. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll address that, some of those. And again, we can always go deeper into any of these topics and uh, uh, make sure that we answer all of your questions to your satisfaction. So let's start from the top and, and answer the question as to why AWS. And here are some uh, key reasons why AWS is the best cloud to run Microsoft workloads. First is the breadth and depth of services that we have on offer. Uh, AWS supports the full Windows stack, including, like I said, AD, .NET, uh, SQL Server, and others. We offer unique capabilities such FSX for Windows Server, as, as I mentioned earlier on, to do file servers in, in the cloud and uh, manage Active Directory that allows you to not only have Active Directory in the cloud, but also link it to your, uh, your perhaps your existing uh, uh, Active Directory in, uh, on your on-premise uh, infrastructure. Um, we're also the only cloud provider offering a cloud-like dedicated host experience. And this comes into play for licensing reasons uh, when it comes to uh, uh, Microsoft uh, workloads. The second is uh, reliable and uh, reliability and security. Um, and, and I know security was mentioned as one of the uh, uh, key uh, uh, concerns for, for most of you. Uh, so we have two times as many regions with multiple availability zones within e each one of them. And that is one of the reasons why AWS had had seven times less downtime hours compared to our closest competitor last year. Um, and in terms of security, we have over 200 certifications and attestations, and we con co continuously invest in, in security because security is, uh, is number one priority for us at uh, AWS. Next is in terms of uh, performance, AWS uh, extensive compute selection. We have over 400 compute options to, to select from, uh, coupled with the best in class storage and networking features allows us to uh, deliver nearly two times better performance and up to 40% better price performance for running, for instance, SQL servers on AWS compared to our closest uh, competitors. In terms of cost, because uh, that was one of the reasons mentioned in the poll as well, uh, the, you know, we have a, a lower TCO or the total cost of ownership uh, as uh, attested by a research firm IDC, which estimates that uh, customers will realize an average return on investment of 442% over five years when they bring their uh, Windows workloads to, to AWS. So customers can bring their existing uh, licenses to AWS and save even more with uh, uh, some programs that we have that we call savings plans and EC2 spot instances. Uh, and again, we can describe those more in, in more details. Um, optimization and licensing assessment, what we call OLA is a program that we have, uh, can also help provide AWS right size recommendations based on the customer's uh, on-premise utilization and Microsoft license consumption, right? Again, the optimization uh, aspect is very important here to save costs uh, as well. And the last but not least is the migration experience and, and innovation, oops, sorry, let me go back. Uh, the, the last item is the migration experience and innovation that we have. We have uh, our unmatched migration experience 
has helped thousands of organizations, uh, such as companies like uh, HES and Ancestry.com, Expedia, et cetera, easily migrate and modernize their Windows workloads on AWS. Uh, and, uh, with you know, running Windows in the cloud for over 12 years at AWS, um, that's longer than uh, other cloud providers have actually existed. Uh, we host tw twice as many uh, Windows Server instances, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, and we have uh, programs such as a Migration Acc Acceleration Program, or MAP, that we'll, we'll talk a little bit more uh, in subsequent slides. And those have helped our customers reduce the risk and cost of uh, moving to, uh, to the cloud. Okay, so I'm not going to go into, um, I'm not going to look at every AWS uh, differentiators, but let's look at, at this one, uh, which is our uh, reliability and security uh, part. Uh, so we have the best global infrastructure for running workloads that require high availability with uh, 77 availability zones across well, it was 24 regions up to two days ago. Uh, just two days ago, we announced the general availability of the Osaka region in, in Japan, making it the second region within Japan. So again, these numbers are evolving. We're in every inhabited continent uh, in the world. Um, so the uh, AWS region and availability zone model has been recognized by industry analysts as the recommended approach for running enterprise applications that require high availability. Uh, and AWS provides two, two times more regions, more than two times actually, uh, more regions with multiple availability zones that are uh, our next largest uh, cloud provider. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we're able to achieve high availability for our customers' workloads. So the foundational design that of regions and availability zones really comes into play in, in, in guaranteeing uh, reliability and resilience. Uh, security is job zero at AWS. We have invested in and have acquired over 210 security compliance and governance certifications and attestations, and those keep on increasing. And we give you all the tools and the shared responsibility model to, that allow you to secure your workload uh, on top of what we're doing on the infrastructure side. Okay. Um, here is a, a graphical representation uh, showing our pace of innovation and integration of uh, the various features and functionalities that allow us to support virtually any use case our customers may, may have for Windows workload. So you can see here Windows Server, uh, SQL Server, .NET, and app modernization uh, features that have had that exponential growth over the years in terms of new features being added to, to our portfolio. Okay. Um, speaking of our experience, um, millions of customers run on AWS, and we've spent over 14 years helping organizations migrate to the cloud, including large-scale migrations of servers, applications, data centers, databases, et cetera. Our objective is to assist customers, whether they are already on AWS or still on-premise or at a co-location uh, space, or even on another cloud. And that is to eventually modernize those applications. A typical journey may start with uh, moving some project workloads in the assessment phase. Um, then to a broad migration, then to optimization, and finally to full modernization of the application. Uh, this results in, uh, in lower, uh, lower technical debt or retiring your technical debt uh, and, and moving to modern uh, application uh, schemes. Uh, like uh, Delta was mentioning earlier on, going from say monolith to microservices, uh, for instance. At AWS, uh, we have programs, tools, and services to assist customers wherever they are in their cloud journey. Uh, and partners like Particle Presence can also assist in, in this process. So wherever you are and however long this journey may take, we, we can help you go through, through, this, uh, through this journey uh, with confidence. Our teams help customers get more value from infrastructure they can help optimize their Windows environment for cloud and leverage existing skills and resources. 
that you've invested on in uh, for many years. After engaging with, uh, you know, particular presence and AWS Windows specialist, customers can expect reduced AWS charges, reduced Microsoft licensing fees, and accelerated cloud adoption. Let's take a, a, a bit of a deeper look at the four areas in which we have customers shown here and mapped to a customer stage of adoption, which are you know, the project migration, optimization, and modernization uh, phases that we just uh, talked about. First is the cloud uh, migration, so that we can see here, the top left. Uh, many organizations have Windows in their environment, either for backend applications or running mission critical systems, uh, actually 70% in most, in most cases. Uh, during this stage of uh, cloud migration, uh, we will assist with uh, an assessment of existing environment to provide estimated pricing, right sizing uh, your environment, uh, and modern architectural options that are uh, uh, recommended and, uh, and tools such as the AWS License Manager to support open source, uh, open source uh, strategy and leverage Windows programs to, uh, to accelerate that, uh, those migrations. Next, we have the steady state uh, optimization here in the top uh, right corner. Um, so about three to six months uh, post-migration, uh, we as AWS have an updated resource uh, consumption and customers have learned more about you know, uh, the AWS capabilities. So at that point, we can assist you with right-sizing to new AWS instances that better fit the, that, uh, those particular workloads that you're running. Uh, or to uh, also uh, leverage uh, managed services where you, you don't have, you and your team don't, do not have to do the, uh, the day to day uh, management of uh, patching and, and, and uh, administrating uh, infrastructure. Um, we can also work with procurement to help them develop a licensing strategy. Uh, so when it comes to uh, when it makes sense to bring your bring uh, your your license uh, using the BYOL model, bring your own license versus <clears throat> you know including license uh, paying licenses that are offered by AWS. We have the procurement team with purchasing options such as reserved instances where you commit for one or three years to to certain consumptions of uh, AWS uh, uh, resources. Uh, as well as compute savings plans, which is another uh, version of, uh, uh, of reserve instances. Next, we have the third uh, step is the workload modernization phase that we see here on the bottom left. <clears throat> modernization can mean different things to different people. For us, we're talking about uh, doing some uh, modernization by moving EC2 windows, uh, migrating to EC2 Linux, going to containers like uh, uh, Delton was mentioning on uh, earlier on, moving to managed services or actually going completely serverless and leveraging those services. Uh, it also means going from uh, SQL and migrating it to SQL on Linux or RDS, which is our managed uh, relational database service um, with SQL Server and or other purpose-built uh, databases where uh, that makes better sense. It also means going from .NET framework to .NET Core, the open source version of .NET. And we'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in subsequent slides. Finally, we have the operational uh, innovation. Here we help customers with the undifferentiated heavy lifting with operational innovation so that your team does not need to manage infrastructure but can instead focus on innovating and adding value to your own customers. We help our customers move to AWS managed or uh, AWS cloud native solutions, such as uh, manage uh, Active Directory instead of running Active Directory within uh, a, a virtual uh, instance uh, within EC2, um, uh, or moving to FSx, our like the aforementioned uh, Windows five server uh, uh, solution that we have within AWS. Um, or Amazon RDS, RDS for SQL Server or other uh, instances that we can use here. So we have uh, a few options uh, here that we can talk about. Um, 
we, we briefly mentioned Migration Acceleration Program. Uh, so uh, Migration Acceleration Program or MAP for Windows is built on a th three phase journey uh, to systematically help you accomplish the migration journey. Uh, so MAP for Windows starts with the assess phase that includes a migration readiness assessment that we call MRA along with optimization and licensing assessment that we call OLA to support creation of a, a total cost of ownership model to help you build business support for your migration project. Again, this ties up to the concerns that you raised in the first poll regarding cost. We help you uh, get a full picture of the total cost of ownership by leveraging some of these uh, services. In the second phase, which is the mobilize phase, uh, which includes uh, a migration readiness and planning uh, projects designed to build your capabilities and experience, uh, how easy it is to migrate to, to AWS. Again, this is where we build some, some muscles for your teams as well, so that you, you, you get more familiar on the, the migration process and, uh, and uh, you know, get accustomed to it. Uh, Mobilize also includes eight work streams uh, that are pictured here. And the level of activity required in these work streams is determined by the readiness levels determined during the uh, assessment uh, phase that, uh, that happened before that. Uh, we, in the mobilized activities include uh, actual migration of recommended maybe 10 to 20 applications, uh, which allow us to build your team's migration capabilities alongside migration experts from AWS and, uh, and uh, particular presence. Uh, Mobilize typically runs for, can run for from two to six months and involves um, uh, partners like a particular presence or uh, even AWS uh, pro serve our professional services arm uh, that, and they prepare you for large scale migration and operation, which is phase three. So during phase three, during uh, the migration and modernization, uh, you'll continue to migrate waves of application and operate and optimize your cloud environment and uh, applications. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the uh, migration uh, acceleration program. Okay, in terms of tools, I, uh, I apologize, this is a bit of a busy slide, but it is really mainly uh, to, show, to show you the depth and, and breadth of tools and services available associated with each stage of, uh, of the migration. During the assess phase, tools are, de are deployed to perform high-level discovery of on-premise or hosted infrastructure with the goal of determining the organization's readiness for cloud and to build a high-level business case for the migration. Uh, the goal of using tools in this phase are to support the decision to move to AWS with data and best practices driven methodology. Again, in this phase, we have, we, we gather with this discovery and assessment phase, so we gather information. So I'm not going to talk about each one of them, but maybe calling out because we're going to talk a little bit more about it later on. Uh, the TSO logic that's actually been rebranded as AWS Migration Evaluator. Uh, <clears throat> and it provides an optimized business case and financial analysis tools. Uh, it identifies on-premise compute, local storage, memory, and Windows licenses. It does analysis, what you have, uh, how it's used, and what it costs to operate uh, that in, in the cloud, right? So, and a few other services associated with application discovery services and others, right? Now, moving to the mobilized phase, uh, during the mobilized phase, tools are used to analyze the data provided during the assessment phase to identify dependencies and risk and to determine a detailed application level strategy. Okay. So in that case, just calling out say the migration portfolio assessment tool, uh, which is available to use by uh, AWS uh, organizations and uh, uh, partners like uh, Particular Presence, and it provides analysis and decision support tools uh, to build a migration plan, including dependency mapping and, and, uh, and wave planning. Right, so that you, you can say, um, I'm going to have three different waves, and this is what will fall in wave one, two, and three, for instance. Then moving on to the migrate and uh, uh, modernize uh, phase, 
this uh, here we have tools uh, that play a significant role in the execution of the migration including building a secure landing zones migrating resources and data delivering reporting and providing transparency right so again quite a few tools uh, associated with that uh, to to provide this and we'll look a little bit more at some of the tools but really want to give you a quick uh, overview of um, uh, the 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 rich set of tools that we've been able to develop uh, in over a decade of uh, doing this. Just a, one call out here is that we talk a lot about native AWS services, but we also have a, a very rich ecosystem of third party uh, software and services partners that is, you know, uh, indicated in the top right with uh, within AWS uh, uh, marketplace. Again, so we have uh, we can leverage and we do leverage those um, uh, those tools whenever needed, okay? And in terms of programs, uh, we have uh, uh, three different programs here that, you know, that I want to call out. First is the end of support uh, migration program. Uh, so AWS offers a program to drive migration of legacy Windows Server applications to the latest supported versions of Windows Server without any code changes. So that's what this uh, EMP program or end of support migration program focuses on. Uh, we talked a little bit about optimization and licensing uh, uh, assessment um, in, in, in the past, but again, this is an area where we would do, and as the name implies, uh, an, an assessment on the licensing needs and even working with your procurement and other teams to, uh, to look at, at that in more depth. And the last one is the migration acceleration program that we've already talked about. So, um, um, uh, so this gives you a bit of an overview of some of the programs that we have available and the tools associated with that. So maybe we'll take a quick pause here and uh, ask the second poll question, uh, uh, Leanne. All right, so blockers to cloud migration. What would you say were or are the major blockers preventing you from migrating with your, your Windows, <coughs> sorry, your Windows workloads to the cloud? So please select the answer that best fits your, uh, your situation. All right. Okay. All right. So not sure where to start and need expert to guide the process. All right. So definitely note those down. Where to start and expert guidance, right? And maybe those two are linked, right? So um, make sure we address those. Uh, so now I uh, will just pivot a little bit and uh, see uh, the, the, some of the uh, uh, phases that, that we have in, in terms of the, 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 the migration process. Right? Um, so phase one is the discover, analyze, and plan phase. Uh, in this phase, we gather uh, data center inventory. Uh, we do uh, some analysis on, 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 on what the inventory that we've uh, collected. We optimize uh, your uh, data center infrastructure to AWS mappings. Uh, and we provide some tools, programs, and partner uh, solutions to help with, with this process. Right? Uh, and so some of the tools are, are listed here. Again, we'll call out the application discovery service, TSO Logic, which is now migration evaluator, but also like I mentioned a little bit earlier on, we have third-party tools from risk networks, uh, cloud health, cloud demise, and many, many others that can help in, in this uh, phase of the, in the discovery phase of the uh, migration process. 
Phase two is application design. Here we determine your application migration patterns and also iterate on your architecture designs to follow best practices and the AWS well-architected framework. Um, um, so, we'll be, and before we go to the next one, uh, the, the next phase, uh, let's first talk about migration strategies and the seven R's of uh, migration that is shown here. Uh, assessing your application portfolio and uh, determining your application migration pattern for all of you, your applications is a critical step to the success of your migration planning and execution. Uh, early cloud adopter CIOs from large enterprises have told us that they want to jump straight to an all-in refactoring of all of, the, of their applications to take full advantage of the cloud but this can result in a lengthy des uh, design process before moving the first workloads to the cloud uh, as, uh, rewriting, uh, as rewritten applications, right? Um, based on that, we advise you to take advantage of significant uh, lift and shift opportunities to get your cloud migration started quickly, which also means gaining cloud experience and seeing cost savings quickly. This can jumpstart your refactoring effort as well. Additionally, you can always refactor after you lift and shift and have gained more cloud experience. Uh, we also want to call out an emerging new R, which is the relocate one. Um, and that is, uh, with, that, with that R, which is relocate, you can quickly relocate applications to AWS based on uh, either uh, VMware and or uh, container technologies with minimum, minimal effort and uh, complexity, right? Um, so one, uh, once some basic discovery and assessment has been done, each application migration tends to follow one of these seven different paths that are, are shown here. So we, we start with the discovery, do an assessment, and then we say, all right, which of these paths is appropriate for that particular workload that we're dealing with, okay? Um, and this, um, uh, it, 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 these seven R's, uh, or that are the seven uh, different paths, uh, are built upon the, the original five R's that Gardner coined in, in 2011. Uh, so these include relocate. So the first one we talked about. So again, this is VMware, VMware on VMware Cloud on AWS. This good illustration uh, of that. Um, so we already talked about that. Uh, Rehost, uh, that is the simplest approach, right? Uh, and that is uh, so sometimes called lift and shift. And it's often representing half or more of a customer's environment and can typ typically be migrated leveraging tools that automate the process. So we have tools that can do that very easily um, uh, now, right? So uh, this, this can be the simplest approach. Uh, as customers progress through their migrations, we often find them starting with re-architecting applications as the default approach, but really they usually start with the rehosting uh, uh, path, take the rehosting path first for some of the early workloads. Next is the, the, the um, re-platforming. Uh, so some application may require modification to address specific challenges or provide key benefits such as uh, reducing licensing costs, for instance. And this is where replatforming may, may make more sense. Repurchase is when, um, with a lot of uh, customers, is where they decide to move to a SaaS, a, a software as a service model, uh, and towards solutions uh, like, um, you know, uh, SaaS models with Workday, Salesforce, and, and many others. Uh, then we have the uh, refactoring uh, part, which is shown here in purple. Um, and in some cases, you may want to completely reimagine your application architecture and skip right towards state of the art by leveraging the broadest set of container-based, serverless, and uh, managed uh, non-relational database offerings on, on the market. Right? So that will, will require some refactoring and quite a bit of work. So, um, that would be uh, the, 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 the most involved migration path uh, of all. Um, 
retire and retain are probably the simplest one because uh, with retire you you never know what you're going to find until you look right so it is common for us to find that uh, no one knows what 10 or 20 percent of an enterprise it portfolio does and can simply be shut off and retired right and retain is is probably the simplest one uh, there may be some workflows that you want to keep on premise and you don't want to do any changes to that so um so th those would be the, the seven R's of the migration strategies, right? So again, going back, moving back to our migration process uh, discussion, as you can see here with the circular arrows that are shown uh, between the design and uh, migration uh, phases, um, this, this forms an iterative process for migrating waves of applications. So you may go through this uh, design and migrate and integrate and validate many times in an iterative uh, um, uh, manner. Uh, and from the previous design phase, we have determined the migration approaches with respect to rehosting, replatform, and refactoring. So we've also designed our application architecture based on the AWS well-architected framework. Now we are to perform migration, integration, validation according to the prioritized backlog of applications. And finally, in the operate and optimize phase, you can maximize the benefit derived from hosting applications on AWS. The optimizing activities can address cost, performance, security, or resiliency concerns for your application stack. Uh, for example, you can use automatic scaling features to add more capacity during peak hours and remove them during off peak hours to lower cost. Uh, and provide services to, to your customers um, uh, on an as needed basis, and thereby making your workload very elastic. So this is a, one very attractive uh, feature of, uh, of the cloud, the elasticity of the cloud. Now we can uh, jump in and look at uh, different uh, migrations of uh, databases, storage, compute, and others, right? So let's start with, with uh, databases. Uh, and here we talk about Amazon RDS, which is our uh, managed relational database, which offers multiple flavors, including SQL Server. Uh, with RDS, we support native backup and restore for my, uh, Microsoft SQL Server uh, databases. Um, you can do a full backup. You can, we can import uh, and export uh, SQL database in a single easily portable file. Uh, we can stage that in, in an uh, Amazon S3 uh, object store uh, and then import it into RDS. So this could be a good way of uh, moving data and, as we, and hydrating your database within uh, AWS. And that process can also be done in, in reverse, right? Which is if you have a database in the cloud and you want to move some of it on-prem, you can do it in, in, in both directions, right? So, this is one way, uh, but in general, uh, we, we, we have a service that does that very well, uh, and that service is called Database Migration Service, uh, so, uh, or, or DMS, uh, we call it DMS for short. Uh, DMS supports both uh, heterogeneous and homogeneous migrations. Um, it can do a migration pre-assessment to be able to detect any issues that prevent migration from completing success successfully. Um, you can also do a time, uh, uh, time uh, and um, incremental uh, migration. You can do full backup and change as well as continuous uh, replication between source and tar target databases. Okay, and and the source and target can can be uh, anywhere. Um, uh, one of them being AWS, that's the, the only requirement. So we can do this uh, migration using uh, the database migration service to uh, AWS RDS databases. We can do continuous data replication uh, with minimal downtime. And this is an interesting use case also for uh, dev and test, as well as disaster recovery, where you, you can continuously replicate database to uh, to AWS as a DR location. Um, as, as I mentioned, you can migrate between 
like-to-like -like, uh, engines or between different engines. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're showing uh, some migration between an Oracle database and where, uh, an Aurora uh, database, which is uh, the, uh, uh, the AWS uh, cloud native relational database. This is our most popular service actually uh, available. And we have uh, a tool that is called a schema conversion tool. This is a companion tool to the, to the database migration service that we can use to do that schema conversion. And that allows us to go from one database engine type to another. Right? And we'll talk a little bit more about it here. Um, so we, uh, the schema conversion tool, as I said, is a companion tool. Um, and as the name indicates, it does the schema conversion between different types of uh, database engines. Uh, it supports a wide range of database engines, uh, both for a transactional uh, relational databases, as well as, as analytical, so data warehouse, think of data warehouses in, in this case. Uh, this two, the two-step process involves the conversion or copy of the schema as step one followed by the data movement part done by DMS for databases or uh, the schema conversion tool for data warehouses that are shown here. Okay, so again, using DMS and schema conversion tools is a very good way of migrating databases to AWS. Now, <clears throat> let's look at how we can migrate servers to, to AWS. Uh, the first option is to use a service that we call Cloud Endure. Uh, Cloud Endure is, a, uh, is an AWS service that, uh, that is a migration and disaster recovery tool. Um, it does migrate, uh, Cloud Endure migration in, in particular, because we're talking about migration in this case, simplifies, expedites, and reduces the cost of cloud migration by offering a highly automated lift and shift solution. Um, it is uh, flexible, uh, so the technology enables you to migrate from any source. Uh, all you need is a lightweight agent that can be deployed on the source machine as long as it's running a supported uh, x86 operating system and all of the common Windows and Linux operating systems are supported. Once the agent is deployed on that source machine, whether it's physical, virtual, or cloud-based, we will replicate it uh, seamlessly uh, into AWS without disruption. Uh, if you are looking for the ability to migrate back, such as for regulatory or compliance requirements, Cloud Endure makes it easy to go back and uh, back as well um, and do some uh, testing as well um, for for in, in this case for disaster recovery. The second advantage is that it's reliable. Uh, Cloud Endure continuous data replication or CDC uh, replicates workloads at the block level. So in, in a storage block level, level replication is what we do with the Cloud Endure. As soon as the agent is deployed, it will detect all the disk attached to the machines uh, that it's, uh, it's uh, installed on uh, and, and, and that are being migrated. And as long as those disks are, are presented as block devices, it will replicate everything in, in a consistent, very robust and uh, predictable fashion. Uh, block level replication means that none of the data gets left behind. So everything moves over, including the machine state, the operating system configuration, application, database, files, everything uh, will, will, will be uh, uh, moved over uh, as well. And the last piece is that it, uh, it can be highly automated. To start, a very minimal skill set is required to operate Cloud Endure. There's a, a unified process for migrating any kind of application operating system. So you don't need to be a subject matter expert on any of these to, to operate it. And this process is used is very uh, uniform across, um, across different sources and diff different operating systems. Uh, so Cloud Endure will do the heavy lifting behind the scenes. And the only thing that I know your staff will need to do is to deploy the agent on the source machine so that the automatic continuous data replication can begin, right? So, and we have um, this, uh, this diagram showing, you know, the flexibility of uh, Cloud Endure and the power of Cloud Endure and how many 
of the applications, databases, operating systems, and source infrastructures that it can support. So it's almost any source on-prem, uh, other clouds, uh, it can be virtually any uh, Linux flavor or Windows uh, flavor, uh, any type of databases, the, the most common ones are listed here, as well as uh, any type of uh, uh, applications that, um, that, that, that may be running on this infrastructure. So again, Cloud Endure is very flexible in, in that sense. Um, we also have another tool that is called Server Migration Service um, or SMS. With SMS, you can begin migrating a group of servers with just a few clicks in the AWS Management Console. After my, the migration has initiated, SMS manages all the complexities of the migration process, including automatically replicating volumes of live servers to AWS and creating new uh, uh, Amazon machine images or AMIs periodically. The, the, the AMIs are the, uh, the, the, the operating system images uh, that, that are used to boot up uh, 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 an instance within AWS. Um, it also does orchestration uh, of uh, multi-server migrations. Uh, it can do test, it can test uh, server migrations incrementally. Uh, you can, and it's, it's cost effective. Uh, the, you know, one of the differences between uh, Cloud Endure and SMS is that uh, SMS is, uh, is a free service. There is no additional fee to use SMS. You only pay for the standard fees of, you know, the storage that you would consume, be it on S3 for object storage that we use temporarily and uh, EBS, the elastic block uh, 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 storage um, uh, block service that, that we have where we store uh, some of the snapshots that, that we're uh, collecting here uh, and some of the data transfer um, May, may incur a bit of a cost, uh, but minimal cost. Um, you can also minimize downtime. Uh, incremental SMS replication minimizes the business impact associated with the application downtime during the final cutover, right? So again, another tool uh, that allows you to do server migration. And how does it work? We have uh, four phases here. And <clears throat> In this, uh, in this example, we have a virtualized VMware environment. Uh, and SMS will rely on the native VMware snapshot mechanism. Uh, those snapshots are exported by the local SMS virtual machine in an OVF format or open virtualization format into an S3 bucket, okay, that is shown uh, here. Um, and um, and, and, and those are finally converted into AMI uh, or uh, Amazon machine images. And those can be launched to uh, EC2 instances at the end, right? So this is the process that, that is done. And we have the scheduled uh, phase, which, which schedules migration jobs, either immediately or at a future date and time. You have the uh, <clears throat> uploading phase, which takes a snapshot, exports to OVF, uh, update, updates the VMDK uh, to, S3, uh, to S3, it does the upload to, uh, to S3 rather, um, and it, it does the cleanup and maintenance of the snapshots as well. The converting is the conversion of uh, the, the VMDK to uh, EBS snapshot. And then we have the creating AMI that, as I mentioned, will create the AMI uh, for, uh, for AWS based on the EBS snapshots that we, we, we already have in place, okay? Um, now switching gears and talking about storage, what can we use to migrate storage? Well, uh, the first service we're gonna talk about is called AWS DataSync. It, um, DataSync <clears throat> makes it simple and fast to move large amounts of data online between on-premise storage and uh, Amazon S3. You know, so the targets can be <clears throat> S3, can be uh, the Amazon Elastic File System, which is the NFS uh, a service within the AWS cloud, cloud, or the Amazon FSx for Windows servers. Uh, so that the file server for Windows that we talked about a bit earlier on. 
manual tasks related to data transfers uh, can be a hindrance and slow down migrations or burden IT operations. Data syncs will eliminate uh, or automatically handle many of these tasks, including scripting copy jobs, the scheduling and monitoring of transfers, validating data, optimizing network utilization, et cetera. Uh, the data sync software agent connects to your, uh, either to your NFS or your uh, SMB storage. So you don't have to modify your application. So it's very transparent to your uh, application. Uh, data sync can transfer hundreds of terabytes and millions of files at speeds of up to 10 times faster than open source uh, tools that are available. And it can do it over the internet or uh, uh, direct connect uh, uh, links, uh, which are private connections between uh, clients and AWS. You can use data syncs to migrate active data sets or archives to AWS, transfer data to the cloud for timely analysis, processing, et cetera. Right? So it's very powerful and provides you the tools to do that migration. Um, looking at uh, an example uh, use case with data sync with Amazon FSx for Windows. Uh, in this case, we have a file, uh, a shared file system on premise uh, using NFS or SMB. Uh, let's assume it's SMB and, and in the case of, uh, of Windows workloads. Uh, we use the data sync agent on-prem, which will transparently up, upload um, those uh, files within the SMB uh, file share to, uh, to the cloud, to the AWS cloud, using the data sync uh, service. It does it over TLS so that there's encryption in motion. Um, and then as a target at the landing uh, area, it will put that into our FSX for Windows a file share in the cloud. Right? So again, this is a very quick way of having a, a file server in the cloud using native uh, uh, AWS um, uh, Windows file server uh, solution with FSX and making sure that you move your shares from on-premise to, to the cloud, okay? The second storage solution we're gonna talk about here is called um, uh, uh, Storage Gateway. Uh, this, so this is an, an important uh, storage service uh, used for migration and for also providing some uh, scaling and bursting for, uh, for our customers. Um, storage Gateway actually comes in three different flavors. Uh, there is first, uh, there's the uh, file gateway. The file gateway, uh, as the name implies, uh, presents a file interface that enables you to store files as objects and into an uh, Amazon S3 object uh, storage using industry standard, either NFS or SMB uh, file protocols. And you can access those files uh, via NFS or SMB from your data center or uh, from uh, your uh, cloud EC2 instances. Uh, or you can access those files as objects with uh, API calls as well. Okay. So <clears throat> that's one way to do it. The other uh, option is called a volume gateway. Um, that the volume gateway, uh, oops. All right. So uh, volume gateway, uh, and as, as a different, uh, uh, as a difference with uh, with the file gateway, uh, will actually present your applications block storage volumes you know, using the iSCSI protocol. So this is block. What is presented here is block, not NFS or uh, SMB. Uh, data written to these volumes can be asynchronously backed up as point in time snapshot of your volumes and stored in the cloud as. Uh, Amazon EBS uh, snapshots. You can back up your on-premise volume gateway uh, vo uh, volumes using the services native snapshot scheduler or uh, another service from AWS called AWS backup service. And in both cases, volume backups are stored on uh, as uh, EBS snapshots uh, in AWS. Uh, finally, just a quick mention, even though we don't, we may not use it much here, uh, is uh, the third flavor of uh, storage gateway, which is the tape gateway. Tape gateway is, uh, will 
present itself to your existing backup application as an industry standard iSCSI based virtual tape library or VTL consisting of uh, virtual media changer and virtual tape drives. You can continue to use your existing backup applications and work close while writing to a nearly limitless collection of virtual tapes. Uh, when you no longer require immediate or frequent access to the data contained on the virtual tape, you can have your backup application move them uh, uh, into uh, archive tiers to lower the cost uh, of, uh, of storage. Again, this is a good way uh, to, uh, to leverage the cloud for your uh, tape uh, usage uh, um, cases, right? Um, just a quick way of showing how Storage Gateway works. Uh, and with that background on uh, Storage Gateway, uh, you can now see how Storage Gateway addresses the hybrid cloud storage challenges that you may be facing. Uh, and specifically, uh, Storage Gateway allows uh, customers to connect to and use key cloud storage services such as uh, S3 uh, Glacier, which is the archiving uh, tier of uh, S3 object store, as well as Elastic Block uh, Store. Um, additionally, Storage Gateway integrates with AWS services such as uh, key management uh, service for encrypting your data. And we, we didn't mention this, but uh, key management uh, service is, a, is an important uh, service, again, ties to your security concerns that allows you to encrypt everything at rest within, within AWS, um, as well with other uh, services as well, uh, be it uh, IAM for identity and access, uh, CloudTrail for audit logging, CloudWatch for obser uh, observability, et cetera. Um, so you deploy a uh, storage gateway as a, a virtual appliance on, on premise. Um, we support all the major hypervisors, um, uh, or you can also do it in an appliance. Uh, and what, it, uh, what storage gateway does is it provides a local cache, which enables you low latency access to frequently accessed data while it copies these files to the cloud and makes the, the least frequently accessed ones available in the cloud only. And will, you know, uh, storage gateway will handle the, the, the movement of the data between cloud and on-premise, okay? The last piece I'm gonna talk about is the .NET applications. And for that, we have two services that I just wanna call out. First one is the AWS app container. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so uh, AWS app to container, as the name implies, uh, will do the analysis and builds, will build an inventory of all the applications running in virtual machines, on premises, or in the cloud. You simply select the application you want to containerize and uh, uh, app to container packages the application artifacts and identify dependencies into container images configures the network ports and generates the, the uh, AWS Elastic Container Service, which is our uh, container service, uh, or to Kubernetes pod definitions. Right? So both are supported, both the uh, ECS, which is uh, specific to AWS, and uh, EKS, which is the Kubernetes uh, service within AWS. The other tool is a porting assistant for .NET, which is an open source analysis tool that scans .NET framework applications and generates a .NET core compatibility assessment so that you can migrate uh, uh, from uh, .NET framework to .NET core uh, so that you can port your applications uh, to a Linux um, environment, uh, for instance, and that will help you leverage uh, the, the vast ecosystem of Linux uh, 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 solutions as well as reduce your cost as well. Okay, so again, two services with that. Just a quick um, example of how .NET application migration can be used for uh, rehosting, replatforming, re-architecting using uh, some of our uh, container services with uh, AWS Fargate. AWS Fargate is a, a serverless container service within uh, AWS. Lambda is our serverless uh, engine to execute uh, various popular uh, um, uh, 
programming languages that are supported within it. So again, we have many different solutions available here for, for that purpose uh, that allow you to modernize uh, .NET applications. Um, and additional modernization steps are, uh, are shown here. Uh, so again, you can this can be done in steps, can be done if you want to, or can may, may not have to be. Uh, so the first one we, we talk about is the just migration, migrating the data and storage, say to an Amazon Aurora, which is a cloud native relational database that offers very high resiliency as we cop we, we make to six copies of your data across three availability zones, which again guarantees a high level of uh, fault tolerance. Uh, it can auto scale, uh, you really don't have to manage it uh, much. Uh, we can auto scale the, the storage, um, can automatically back up and really uh, provide you uh, the, the fast high performance enterprise grade relational database at uh, one tenth the cost of such a system, right? And I think this is the last poll that we have, uh, Leanne. All right, here's the question. Uh, how do you think your attendance to this uh, webinar will impact your use or starting to use AWS services or your organization's use over the next six to 12 months? So please answer this and uh, we'll move on to closing statements. So a few more seconds and close the poll. All right. Um, pretty broad. Answers here. Okay, perfect. Thank you for all that give us some feedback on that. Um, just really to close on, on, on the session, I know we're almost up on time here. I uh, just want to reiterate some of the proof points that we talked about uh, during the session, um, especially highlighting why customers would choose AWS to achieve greater cost savings. Again, you mentioned that as a big uh, priority uh, to increase agility, elasticity, globality, but mostly to accelerate their innovation. This is one of the reasons, this is the main reason um, uh, customers may choose uh, AWS. Uh, they want to leave the undifferentiated heavy lifting of managing infrastructure to, to us, to AWS, uh, and focus on improving their customers' uh, experience. Uh, and in particular, looking at why customers choose AWS for their Windows workloads, uh, we see the same reasons. It's really not much uh, difference there. Um, so in terms of uh, reliability, we, we, yeah, we provide greater reliability. Uh, we, and as mentioned earlier on, we have more than twice as many regions with multiple availability zones than, than others. And that is one of the key reasons why we had seven times less downtime than uh, other cloud providers. Uh, we, you know, cost is very important. So we provide uh, a better price performance um, for uh, with, uh, with our services. And that has been verified by third party assessments of SQL servers, for instance, uh, where we've seen two to three X performance advantages over other cloud providers. Um, Greater security. Uh, so we offer over, as I mentioned, 210 security features with an AWS. That's far, far more than any other cloud provider. Um, 
And again, this is a one hour session focused on Windows, but definitely security is a very important topic and we can delve more into that um, um, in future discussions. Um, cost, right? Lowered, uh, lowering your total cost of ownership. Um, so according to IDC, they estimate that customers can reduce their TCO by 56% by migrating the Windows workflows to, um, uh, to AWS. That's, you know, uh, on top of that 442% uh, over five years that we, we saw earlier on. Uh, innovation. Um, we have more services uh, and compatible services uh, within AWS than any other cloud provider. So, and that, that's very important as you, you don't want to see workloads in isolation, but see the importance and uh, keep the possibilities that the cloud offers to you to leverage other services that will add value to your business. Um, finally, experience. Uh, so, we, you know, we, I said that a couple of times before, but again, we have nearly twice as many uh, Windows workloads in AWS than any other cloud provider. We've been running um, Windows in the cloud longer than anybody else. Uh, we offer managed services uh, and we always listening to our customers to make sure we provide uh, this, the, the services, the features and the uh, solutions that they would like to deploy. I'll leave you with uh, just a few statistics. So about 12 years of uh, plus of uh, running Windows and that over 40, 14 years of uh, that AWS has been in existence. Uh, the, our global reach with the different availability zones. Again, that number is wrong as of two days ago. That number has increased. Uh, the security compliance numbers that we have, both for um, industry specific, global in nature with ISO uh, uh, certifications, um, uh, PCI DSS, uh, for instance, for the financial services, uh, GDPR in, 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 in the European Union, et cetera. Um, the different services, we have a very broad and deep catalog of services, over 210 uh, available. Uh, and then in terms of performance, just calling out one thing, which is the, the, the IOPS, the input output per, per second, per instance that we have. Again, we can go deeper in each one of them. We have too many good statistics to display in one, in one slide. Um, and finally, uh, really the, the, the bottom one, 80 plus price reductions since 2006. We, we look at our, uh, our, 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 um, our business as whereby the more we scale, the, the more we have buying power, the more we want to pass on those savings to our customers. So we've been able to achieve over 80 price reductions over time. So again, this goes back to your concerns about cost. We always strive to reduce costs for our customers, not increase it. All right. So with that, I think I'll I would like to thank you. And um, I know we have run a few minutes over time, uh, but hopefully this was uh, useful. I would really want to thank a particular presence for having us, and uh, can switch over to Q and A, address them. But uh, I definitely uh, take to heart some of the feedback and the posts that you've had where uh, you may be struggling on where to start, uh, access to expert guidance, et cetera. So particular presence in AWS, we're here to help you in that, in your journey. So we'll be more than happy to discuss further. Back to you, Delta. And thank you, thank you, Tamarat. Um, thank you for that presentation. Uh, lots, lots, lots in there to digest. Um, so I know that many of us will not go hungry for a few days uh, based on that. But um, you know, clearly uh, on that call, I think that um, participants do realize uh, some of the many benefits of AWS. And um, you know, as a partner, you know, who has had to go through those activities with customers. Um, you know, many times it's best to do it with uh, with partners. Um, we've seen customers who have uh, tried to go it on their own, um, and um, 
you know, they've incurred costs and so on. And, you know, one of the things about AWS is that it's very uh, flexible, but with that flexibility, um, you know, you have to be very, um, uh, very knowledgeable of the services and so on. So definitely uh, we're here to support you to achieve those goals. And, um, and clearly from the presentation, you know, it is definitely seen that there are many different ways uh, to go about uh, your migration journey. Um, uh, Tamrat spoke about the Migration Acceleration Program. Um, he then went through the different processes in order to, um, in, in, order, in order to do the migration um, process. So, you know, you don't have to uh, just do one quick thing, um, you know, lift and shift and put all the infrastructure in the cloud. Um, you know, you can re-architect uh, some of your services and so on. So um, there, there definitely is um, a lot there. And, um, you know, but we're actually uh, here to support you on that. Um, as I said before, we have our solution architects and our technical teams all certified to, to support you. And um, I guess the last thing I'll say is, um, since there are no, no questions in the Q&A, is thank you everybody for your time. Thanks uh, to our team, Leanne, uh, Des, Ali, and uh, Jean from, from AWS for the support. And uh, we look forward to other events with you. Thank you very much.